Okay, everybody, let's take it from the top. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Hi, ho, everybody, and welcome back to D Plus Us, the show about all things Disney. I'm one of your hosts, Griffin Tanel, Griffy D Pad, and with me, as always, is the marvelous, the fantastic, the amazing Mr. Miss Short. How are you doing? Griffin, get my country's name out of your fucking mouth. No, Canada sucks. Actually, Fuck I, you. <laughs> actually, no, I love Canada. I don't know why I'm saying that. <laughs> I love y'all up there. Uh, we got quite an episode for y'all today, folks. We're back with a brand spanking new movie. New Marvel movie. New Deadpool. That's right. We are talking today about Deadpool and Wolverine. Should we have done reviews of the first two Deadpool movies before this? Probably. Probably. Is scheduling hard? Very. So here we are. Let's talk stats and numbers before we jump into things. And, of course, our rigmarole. Because, of course, this is not the only thing we do on the show. You can go check out so, so many awesome things that we do. Like our weekly show that we just wrapped up talking about every episode of The Acolyte. Uh, a weekly show that will return when we talk about Agatha all along and probably something else. I don't know. Um, is there something before that or am I mistaken? probably something before that, but I am too lazy to bring up a calendar. Um, Fair enough. You can also check out our episode that we did all right before recording this one, all about the announcements uh, from Hall H at Comic Con. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Comic Con probably here too because they did something really cool that I really liked for Deadpool and the Wolverine. We might get win or lose before Agatha, but I kind of doubt it at this point. There, there is the the mysterious question mark of D twenty three on the horizon, which we um, will definitely do an episode on that when it happens. But mostly of release dates will probably be announced there for us to talk about and we'll probably do yes. some more parks episodes a games episodes some other fun, fun stuff yeah um, will i make let mitch to act off the leash and talk about marvel snap don't do it no i will not you know you don't want to do that we'll be here for six hours no one wants that <laughs> i like when i just like quietly implanted that idea last night <laughs> um yeah, all of that set and done. Do, 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 do. Um, got that, got that. There was something else I wanted to talk about at the top of the show, but I don't remember what it was. Means so, it doesn't matter all that much. Let's talk numbers and facts. I mean, it probably just means my memory is shit. But <laughs> There's also that. Yeah. Let's talk about stats. Interesting shit. Um, this movie was released... Only a few days ago, as far as recording goes, on July 26, 2024. Runtime of 128 minutes, budget of $200 million, with a box office so far of $438.3 million. Which is fucking crazy um, for an R-rated film. Oh, yeah. Directed by Sean Especially Levin. post-COVID. Uh, now the highest grossing R-rated movie. Uh, opening weekend, which it let's see, let's look back at what it beat. Oh, that's right, it beat Deadpool. It yeah, beat there Deadpool. was something else in there. No, there was something else in there too. Oh, Logan. Or what it was? No, uh, no, there was something else that was big that came out. Uh, Oppenheimer. That was the one. Oh, oh, Oppenheimer. Oh yeah, I guess what Oppenheimer would be rated R. And Joker. Um, I pretend that Joker movie is currently the highest grossing R-rated film of all time. Give please it please change that with this movie. I've Give already it seen week. it twice. It's fucking great. Just change it, please. Is, is, is it though? Um, is this movie great, Mitch? Yeah, fucking awesome. And I get to swear a bunch, just like Hugh Jackman does, which is kind of gratuitous, but also I don't care. Yeah, we got all. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, quickly, uh, directed by Sean Levy. Um, music by Rob Simonson, written by Ryan Reynolds, Reet Reese, Paul Wernick, Zeb Wells, uh, and Sean Levy. Um, you can tell Zeb Wells wrote on this because inexplicably Deadpool is broken up with his girlfriend at the beginning of this film. I will not forgive what Zeb surprise, Wells Surprise, surprise. I will not forgive what Zeb Wells has done to Spider-Man in the last couple of years. Um... Thought he was the homie. No? No. Oh, color me shocked. I know. I know. We've I've talked complained about, about this all the time. I know you do. You complain about a lot of things, Look, though, to be fair. The only thing I've, that Zeb Waltz has written that I will not hold against him is killing Miss Marvel, because I don't think that was his decision. Um, but alas, That was an MCU-motivated decision. Oh, very much so. But we're here. Uh, but we're here. So let's talk about it. 
let's talk not about the Deadpool not the Miss Marvel Wolverine. thing, but Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, Mitch, I'm gonna let you get your hype and excitement out before I bring this bring this way down. All I can say is suck it, Fox. But also thank you because this movie wouldn't exist without all the bad shit you made over the years. Weirdly nostalgic for some of those old movies now. Uh, including some that did not happen. <laughs> yeah, the Channing Tatum bit was funny. Um, no spoilies. Yeah, I don't care. Okay, spoilies. Um, yeah, I did not love this movie. What? Oh, yeah, you're a child. You didn't grow up. No, like, I did look, grow up I, on these. No. Fuck. All I had as a kid were terrible Fox films that all tried to rip off The Matrix. All right? So there was a lot of black leather there and there was a lot of black leather here. I'm not I'm not I'm not hating it. I legitimately like look back with fondness on some of those movies, knowing full well those movies were shit. Like I love like the yeah. first three X-Men movies, even though they're not good movies. Um I look back on the Fantastic Four movies, Daredevil, Electra, all of that. The only ones I really don't look back on were Blade. Um Yeah, I really like those Blade movies. Except it was for the because third I, one. it was because I didn't never watch them as a kid. Uh, I didn't watch those until I was older. That's fair. Um, no, this is not an age thing. This was a, this is a personal preference on the movie thing. Uh, I like a lot of this movie, but see, the humor what, in what this I, movie is bad. See, I liked a lot of that. Half but maybe of it's film, just it, half of this film feels like it is pandering to the wrong audience. Um, half of this film is ha ha young people, ha ha woke mob. Ha ha, ableism. Blaze says Blaze Blaze says the fucking R word. He does he does drop an R word, yeah. That is that is very true. Like, don't See, get me this I, feels I, like I, Deadpool with and the area that I did not like Deadpool from. See, I, I think the way that I saw a lot of those jokes, other than the one, and thankfully we did say spoilers off the top because we already confirmed one of the or I guess two of the cameos. Um for me, I I really thought that those jokes were all more tongue in cheek than anything else, where it was poking fun at the folks that would say things like, oh, the woke mob is coming for us or oh, that like. I actually thought that was like, well, like. I feel like that kind of subverted the predisposition to some of those things where it was able to poke fun at the fact that this is a movie that is made to be crass and rude and abhorrent because Deadpool by design is an abhorrent character. There's and a, those kind of things were more tongue in cheek, I think more than anything else, at least in, in my viewings of this Maybe film. There's a difference between crass and rude and like abhorrent humor and just straight up disrespectful. Um, this movie s flirts the line a lot. And but to my opinion, with some of those, particularly the blade moment, that just jumps that jumps the line and goes straight to disrespectful. Um, now, yeah, that was unnecessary. I would say that one, and I would tell you uh, a couple of the other ones. Um, See, I thought I thought the ableist said, one was was a fun joke. I thought that was yeah, that one I can move on from. But the um, yeah. that one and the 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 Gen Z one, I laughed my ass off at. I will. We'll As you should. Um, oh, the the trauma dumping. Yeah, always trauma and trauma dumping. Why can't you? Why can't you uh, bottle it? Why can't up you just push it, it down a, and bottle it up like the rest it, of us and turn it into accomplishment or cancer? Uh, that's the part that really kills it. Um, yeah. All of that said, fucking love Emma Corrin in this. Uh, fucking love Hugh Jackman in this. <laughs> love knowing that so much what, of like. This. What Emma Corrin pulled, like the influences that she had for this were like uh, Gene Wilder and Willy Wonka. And I can't remember the other one. They play such oh, a great, like just fucked up human being. Like Cassandra Nova is just a fucked up character. Like I'm kind of disappointed that they die at the end of this movie. Oh, so the, the two characters that she drew inspiration from for this role, one being Willy Wonka the other being Christoph Waltz character in Inglorious Bastards. And it just, it comes through in such a, a menacingly humorous kind of way, which is honestly kind of perfect for the kind, th this sort of film and just the grotesque nature of Cassandra Nova's abilities here of like, she got her fingers in places. Fingers are not meant to go. 
More than once. Okay, everybody. Let's... Triggered the trailer on, accident, on the opening on accident <laughs> again. What else is new? Oh, uh, look, when you need to look things up uh, quickly mid-show, and then also you have hotkeys. <laughs> hotkeys make things, things hard. <laughs> you can very easily accidentally. Oh, uh, yeah, things are great. Uh, sorry, I'm just quickly looking up uh, Emma Corrin's pronouns because I forgot to do that before the show. Um, cool. Um, yeah, I really liked a lot of that. I liked where this went. I think the story, the actual story of all of this is very... Um, the actual A to B and beginning to end story, I think, is interesting enough. I don't think it's anything absolutely special. Um, I, I actually like... That it wasn't over the top, all of the universes are dying, blah, blah, blah. It, it was still, like, this was a threequel. This was the end of a trilogy of films. And it still felt that way, even in the scope and scale of something like the MCU, which I really appreciated uh, Disney taking the time to make a film that wrapped essentially the entirety of the Fox universe. Yeah, and I think that was what the door started. opened for some of these fun nods to fans while still knowing, you know, going forward, the MCU is the spot. We're, we're in full spoiler territory at this point. I've already, you've spoiled already spoiled two of the, the cameos. Yes. We are full spoilers. Okay. Fuck all y'all. Chris Evans is in this movie. <laughs> um, which we'll get and to. You that know what? One of my favorite they, 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 they the fucking, movie. they fucking got me. Cause he showed up. I'm like, Oh my God, it is. Wait, no, wait, what? And then, Oh, they're going to do that thing. The okay. The minute he cursed, I realized who it was. Yeah. Um, that's all I needed. It was great because I was watching this movie with my little brother the first time. I've seen it twice now. I think you've also seen it twice. Yeah. We um, both have, yeah. And I had that realization, and I immediately just turned my head and watched him have the realization. Um, I did that on my second showing because I was seeing it with my sister, where I was just watching her with that reveal. She's like, what's going on? I'm like, oh, you didn't watch any of the movies I told you to watch, did you? She's like, I watched the Deadpool movies. I'm like, ah, good enough. this is going to be challenging for you then. You did not do the homework. Which, guess what? There's a lot of fucking homework for this movie. Um, I, I feel like they do a good enough job for at, like average Marvel fans to just be like, oh yeah, these were folks that played these roles a while uh, ago. Guess what? Mitch and I get to switch roles for once. Uh, <laughs> no, there's a, ton, there's a shit ton of homework for this one. You literally have to watch all of Loki to understand anything about the TVA. And where the TVA is. Yeah. Yeah, you have fair. to at least have watched the Deadpool movies in at least a to X Men movie to understand any of that stuff. Yeah, like, like I would say, Deadpool, Deadpool two, Logan are required. Mm -hmm. Loki, Loki, both seasons for probably. like I think the 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 concepts of Loki are required. I don't know if you have to have seen both seasons in their entirety. Season one is probably enough. I would to be say honest. you do because season two establishes that they're protecting the other timelines, not destroying them. But um, here they're but they explain that here very quickly. Like I, I do like that there's a joke when he first gets the TV. That was a lot of exposition really quickly. And I do feel like they did a good enough job of like summarizing what the TVA's role here is of observing, not destroying, and that things are starting to degrade and he's gonna speed it up. I think see, that there I would was agree enough with that here. If it wasn't a splinter group. Um the minute mm. it becomes a splinter group means that there's so much more lore that you have to understand. Um all of that said, like the the very concept of Elias, you need uh, Loki season one, episode three. Oh, because he or, says, yeah, you know, four. from Loki season one, episode five. So that's enough. Which was like, like oh yeah, it was a Loki bit. thing. I loved that. Um, no, I would still say you you do not understand Elias without watching that stuff. Like even if you're like, okay, he's there, he kills things. Like, yeah, but it's so much more than that. That it's frankly you just don't understand without watching it. You just know thread, like. I think they do a decent enough job, but I would tell you that, you know, we talked uh, about the Marvels a lot, having this baggage of watching Miss Marvel beforehand. I would tell you that did a better job with integrating TV shows without having to see the TV shows than this movie did. Of, I'm not sure I'd, I'd, I'd agree there, but it's been I, a while. I do since think that this both, is so. kind of egregious in how much it requires you to watch Loki. Um, but that, you know, all comes down to opinions and whatnot. Um, yeah. let's see other stuff in this movie. God, there's so many Deadpools. These are, they really did the dead. The whole part. core of them. Um, and we got some great cameos in that stuff. I'll tell you what. 
Um, yeah, so like we're going to be pretty fast and loose with the way that the plot is covered. We've already talked about one of the major cameos. Do we want to just dive into the rest? I feel like let's, let's chronological order because I think there's, some, yeah, there's, there's one thing I want to talk about before we get into that. And because it, it's it's Wolverine specific because I want to talk about the Wolverine montage. There, yeah. Because that was with probably song, my... like Huey, Huey, Huey Lewis in the news, the power of love, like. It also just uh, before we get anywhere, the though. soundtrack of this movie fucking. I it actually before we even get to Wolverine, fucking opening credits. We gotta stop and go back because like that is probably the single greatest superhero movie opening ever. Oh man, yeah, I, like my opening credit, and I laughing at our asses off, and then started singing along quietly. <laughs> Yeah, as you should, because it's a catchy ass song. And honestly, you look at you look at the DNA of a Deadpool film, right? And they've all had these opening credit montages. And while Deadpool 2's is very good of, you know, tongue in cheek James Bond, we got a share song. This, to be honest, with the choreo and everything and the desecration, like we knew that they were going to have to revisit the ending of Logan for this, presumably, right? With you know, that being the crux of the death of Deadpool's universe. Which also doesn't make sense timeline-wise, because this takes place before the events of Logan, so I don't know how that would work, but it doesn't matter. Well, clearly it uh, takes place afterwards. Wise. But... No, because Logan was like 2029. Yeah, timelines are bullshit. That's true. Either way, um, the desecration of that scene, it's like, well, how are we going to, you know, do this without you know, ruining the, your memories of Logan. The answer was we aren't. And he's going to absolutely desecrate this corpse. Mm -hmm. And that, open, that whole opening montage is so good. I it's so Deadpool. It's so great. It's very Deadpool. I didn't love it for that reason. Like, I like the tongue and cheekness of it. Like he literally says desecrating the sacred corpse. Like, yeah. Well, like and also the just the fourth wall break of, like, of having the choreo. And playing to the audience, See, playing me, to the camera, opening. I thought it was really fun. His, like, didn't think this movie was going to happen. Man, they're such idiots for letting me keep doing this. Yeah, well, Disney's um, so stupid. Like, I did like that tongue and cheekness of it. There is a reverence I hold for Logan, though, that, was, that, that frankly just stops me from loving that bit as much as it does. But I do think that this movie does still pay very good reverence to Logan of it. It does. Being, their anchor being, like... And they're they're still very tongue in cheek with it, like the way that everyone in the in uh Paradox's unit like adores Logan. Like, I think it was really well, really just the, the idea of the TVA just watching these events like their television, mm -hmm. right? I think is really fun. But yeah, let's talk Wolverines. Wolverines, so many Wolverines. Holy shit, we got we got comic we accurate got comic short accurate, king short Wolverine. King. We got the fucking Wolverine Hulk fight. Um, oh, okay. I don't know if you saw this. So I didn't catch this the first time around, but the second time around, the Hulk is reflected in Wolverine's in claws. claws, just like the comic cover. Yes. I was like, oh my god, it's perfect. Yeah, it's absolutely perfect. I we got we got Age of Age of Apocalypse Wolverine missing got, a hand. The that was Ultimate Wolverine. Was um, that Ultimate Wolverine? I yeah, thought that, that is, was Age of Apocalypse. That, well, it's, it's Ultimate Comics because okay. that outfit was him. Um, we got um, House of X. Hatch patch house of x is the crucifix one um is was that house i just knew that as that uncanny x-men cover um yeah it's no it's and i thought it was house of x that was the storyline i thought it was just um, uncanny well no like i'm saying it is uncanny x-men but i think the storyline oh it's part it of was, house of x okay let me look this up quick because this is one of the times okay. that like logan almost died um uncanny x-men number 20 251 that sounds right. Um, and then, I mean, the biggest cameo of all. Oh, Fever Dream. Fever Dream. Um, we got the Wolverine. We got the Cavalry. We got the Cavalry. Like, didn't see that coming. And he did the Mission Impossible fist pump or fist, fist, fist thing, but it was claws. And, oh, he my did God. the fist pump to release the claws. To I love and that also the, every single one of them is just like, fuck you, kills them immediately. Well, the jab and the jab at DC, and we're going to treat you so much better than those fucks down the street. Like, which is probably not wrong with how they've treated Cavill. Um, but that I, takes me like, we also got a you, proper old man Logan. We did get proper old man Logan. That's right. 
Do you think, though, with Cavill doing this, it was just a cameo, right? I know the internet's probably like, oh, well, there's your MCU Logan. I'm like, nah. No, nah, it was just a cameo. It was just a cameo. Same yeah. way we're not going to actually get a Channing Tatum Gambit movie. but Which I'm actually kind of disappointed about. Although, seeing it, like, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that cameo. Because there were things I loved about it and things I did not like. Let's see. Uh, which one's on the ground? We got the one-haired Age of Apocalypse mixing that was definitely the ultimate comics outfit though that hair in that one though like i mean it was comic accurate like that hair was just a lot <laughs> um we got that i think that's all of those cameos we've got this is very cameo heavy um yeah so i mean i'm also looking like i looked up the age of apocalypse wolverine too like that was they it must have been the same version they were they're, they're is... very 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 similar okay um, I think the only major difference, frankly, is that Wolverine's kind of a villain in the Ultimate Universe. But he's also he, well. I mean, he's a horseman of the apocalypse in Age of Apocalypse. Hmm. Also, a quick shout out to uh, Ollie Palmer, who is uh the bar attend one of the people at the bar, one of the patrons um, of the bar. Yeah, they put Y'all a lot. Gotta of, watch they put a lot of Rexham players in this, um, which is kind of hilarious. I mean, that Welsh flag is front and center. Also, like, uh, Rob uh, McKel- McElhaney. 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 Was supposed to, was in the movie, but got cut. And that is funny to me. He's in the credits as TVA agent. Yeah, he was a TVA soldier, but apparently his role got cut. According Which? To, according to Ryan. Well, I just can't wait to see Rob's reaction to finding out he got cut. I'm sure it's the typical you... tongue-in-cheek bullshit that they do, because they're, they're hilarious. Which I love so much. Mm-hmm. Um, while we're just going through listing like cameo stuff, I think we can also quickly go through all the Deadpool. Oh, uh, okay. So there, he, he has already tweeted out about it. He basically said, I traveled 6,000 miles to do, to shoot my cameo. I hope you enjoyed it because the theater I was watching it had mistakenly cut it out. Since I know Ryan wouldn't do me like that. I look forward to catching the movie and my cameo again today. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Uh, let's quickly run through the Deadpools as well, just because. There's a couple other fun cameos there. Um, first off, let's just talk. We'll talk about Nice Pool actually in more plots really stuff because, yeah. Anyways, we got Dog Pool, played by Peggy the dog, who is Peggy adorable is just... and wonderful and amazing in no notes. The, that scene where Peggy comes in and Nice Pool is giving all of this exposition about the void and the Deadpool core and all that stuff. And he just interstitched with licking. shots of Peggy just licking Ryan Reynolds in the mouth was honestly just so, so good. So good. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got Lady Pool played by Blake Lively. Um, Voiced by Blake Lively. I don't think she was actually in the suit. All right. Uh, yeah. Uncredited stunt woman for the suit. Yeah. Um, we had Kid Pool and Baby Pool who were voiced by Reynolds and Lively's kids. Yeah. Um, which is hilarious. We had Headpool, voiced by the amazing Nathan Fillion, which I couldn't hear. Uh, we couldn't had... I couldn't pull Nathan Fillion out of that? Which I could honestly, not either, just but... to his credit, I feel like people also forget that Nathan Fillion's like a really talented voice actor. He's a very good voice um, actor, and it showed here. We got Matthew McConaughey playing Cowboy Pool. That one I did hear. I was like, God, that one damn, was they, very they... obvious. <laughs> Uh, we had uh, Welsh Pool, played by Paul Mullen of Wrexham, AFC. Uh, we had Canada Pool, played by uh, Ryan Reynolds, his stunt double. Uh, and then just some of the other ones we got. Um, obviously, we got Nice Pool, but we also got uh, The Fool, Deadpool 2099, Golden Age Deadpool, Zen Pool. Wild seeing Zen Pool in a uh, movie. Never thought that. was, that. yeah, that, that um, was not expected. Slightly disappointed that Zenpool actually fought, but that's more me being a comics it's nerd. Fine. Um, Pirate Pool, uh, Welsh Knight Pool. That's right. There's two Welsh pools. <laughs> um, and then credited uh, was Nick Pauly being Reynolds' dance double at the opening credits. He is technically credited as Dance Pool, which is just funny. And very uh, on brand. Mm hmm. Uh, and then a couple of the other uh, MCU cameos for this. Uh, Thor is in this movie, and it is archival footage from Thor: The Dark World. That's I really want to know what was happening in that scene. Same. 
Um, and then obviously Hulk is Hulk because it's fighting Hulk. comic accurate brown suit Wolverine. Mm-hmm. We finally got to see the brown suit. We finally got to see suits. Still don't. We saw eight, We saw many suit. Yeah, saw many suits. Um, we saw parts of suit go bye bye. What a moment. Um, Whew. Yeah, I want to bring it back though. We've talked about like all those. I wanted to get the the listing of cameos out of the way. Talking down to the actual. We're story. not done yet. Surprisingly enough. I feel like all the other cameos are story relevant, and we can talk about them within the story. <laughs> Fine. What, you want every fucking Fox X-Men No, villain? let's just go through it. You want then, me to list it. every single Fox X-Men You movie? already did Evans. I was just confused. That's all. Okay, fine. Also, Electra's in this movie. There we go. There's all your heroes. Um, I've, never, I've never actually seen the Electra movie. The Daredevil movie was so bad. The only redeeming thing about that movie is the music video for um, would you Bring Me the, to Life from Evanescence. Would you believe that the Electro movie is worse? <laughs> yes, which is why I haven't seen it. Yeah, we'll do an episode on it eventually. Uh, Surprisingly, though, the MCU as it exists wouldn't exist without that movie. Do you know why? Uh, about the Daredevil or Electro? Daredevil. I think that was Kevin Feige's first. It was not. Kevin Feige was on X-Men. No, I I think his first was X-Men. But on the set of Daredevil is where Jon Favreau, who played Foggy Nelson in that Daredevil movie, pitched uh, Kevin Feige on an Iron Man film. Yeah, perfect. And five years later, they made Iron Man. Yeah, there you go. Um, Yeah, talking story. Uh, I think we're going to show the topic. The story about this is very very basic. uh, even like Deadpool's got to save the people he loves. Deadpool's got to save people. Even Wolverine's backstory, I thought, was very, very basic. Wolverine, um, bunch of people died. I, I blame myself. I mean, what I what I liked about the Wolverine backstory is that it this was very much the butterfly effect. Wolverine of one difference of he went to the bar that night, didn't stay home, led to him massacring and murdering a ton of guilty and innocent people. Yeah. And becoming I promise I'm this infamous Wolverine in his universe that everyone hates. Yeah, I like I said, the, I think the, the base, the base like outline of the story is very basic and frankly on its own would be kind of boring. Uh, I think what makes it work is the characters' interactions. Um, particularly, it, it for me, it was Laura Kitty showing up. Um, which I'm so disappointed that I had that spoiled for me by the Star Wars Twitter account. That's what's spoiled for you. What's spoiled it for me? I didn't even see the goddamn trailer. The fucking trailer. I didn't see the fucking trailer because I knew there was going to be spoilers. But the Star Wars Twitter account replied to the tweet saying, we recognize that Padawan. And my dumbass brain was immediately able to go, Padawan, Laura Kinney was an acolyte. Laura Kinney is an X-Men. Fuck! Uh, and frankly, so, this this movie has fuck you, Star Wars marketing people that run your Twitter account. You spoiled that for me, and I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> Fair. Uh, this movie has absolutely see- succeeded in me wanting more Daphne Keen as uh, Laura. Um, Honestly, the fact that at the end, one of the things the TVA does is brings her into the Deadpool universe, like, like I've said before, she, that I would love it. If she will. Movie, she uh, will be a part. She will be a part of the MCU post Secret Wars. The, Guaranteed. The only one of the only moments that really got me like emotionally in this movie involves her. Uh, yeah, it's her. It, her and Logan. It wasn't you know, that. It was you were all. You were always the wrong guy until you weren't. Oh, that was a great moment. Don't get me wrong. That wasn't what really got me choked up. For me, it was her putting on the glasses before the fight. That was also um, very good. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I like I really could see them being like, fuck it, we'll make another Wolverine movie and just making it Wolverines. And it's both of them. Um, I don't see that happening. I do see her taking up the mantle of Wolverine after Logan sacrifices himself in Secret Wars or something. Well, I'm saying like pre Secret Wars, like I could feel like one of those random. They're like, fuck it. We got to make another one of these fast. Uh, Look, I would I'm, love that, but I also money. don't. I just don't think there. I don't think there's enough time on the calendar to get something out, unless it's you know they do X twenty three on Disney Plus. Yeah, I just think a movie like that is a lot more can be a lot more low tech. It can't. It can be less CGI heavy. Um, 
and it can certainly be less um, technically heavy. So it feels like a movie that they could do quick. But alas, that's just me thinking on the money brain of Marvel. Um, they do seem to like money. That is very fair. Let's talk through the story of this. this, this, this surprising that this movie starts in 616. Or not 616, but movie well, it starts on the Deadpool tour of the multiverse, which somehow his ability to travel through time also allowed him to travel to a different Earth. Uh, presumably sacred timeline bullshit. Doesn't matter. Um, Either way, we get him in a room with Happy Hogan. And it's like literally every single one of these shots has an Easter egg. Yeah. Um, I do love you how get, they you have the Mark. You have the Mark II helmet. You have the suitcase. You have the cap shield. You have... You have the... Those, uh, Peter's Tony helmet from Iron Man 2. You had the you Age have of the Ultron. Photo. You had the photo. Yeah, the Age of Ultron destroyed a... Um, Which, shit. the photo is framed to not include Peter. Peter because no one in the universe knows who he is. Yes, he has been erased, that's which that's I thought was a really nice touch. Except one slight issue. This that happened means, before the events before of that. Multiverse of Madness? Yes. But I okay. this happened before so he was still in the photo, but it was framed in a way that he wouldn't have been, which I thought was really cool. It's framed because he's not in it, because frankly, they didn't have the rights to put him in it. Um, There's also that. You know, like this takes place. I think they said it was 2014. That was 2018. Either way, it would still be well before the timeline. Way before, yeah. yeah. Um, people forgetting. I yeah, I love how like every moment of six one six is like egregious egregious like cameos egregious um i mean there there is a joke about like yeah like, what i love is there's movie. that line there's that line where he's like oh yeah tony doesn't do these anymore what cameos no, not no like presumably not knowing when they wrote it that they were going to bring back tony stark as as dr doom which you can go hear all our thoughts about that on another episode of the podcast it's up on youtube right now Reflecting to the san diego comic-con stuff but that now, in retrospect, looks really, really tongue-in-cheek because not only is he going to have another gratuitous cameo in the MCU, he is the big bad of the multiverse saga. Uh, yeah, that is happening. Um, Sorry, I'm doing way too many things at once. All good. For some reason, I decided, what if I just uploaded the uh, other episode while we recorded this one? Um, yeah, I'm sure that will lead to any degradation of internet service or anything like that. No, no, not at all. Uh, actually, I know that's still pretty good, but it's also because there's only one person on it. Um, yeah, I think this breaking it off from there, you know, Wade kind of going into this midlife crisis and whatnot. Vanessa, him breaking up with Vanessa. Like I said, you can really tell tell that both worked on this. Eventually, leading into like him working with Peter. Um, I thought Which, that was funny. Pete. Peter's the Peter best. is the anchor being of all Deadpools and all universes. I thought was really fun. Yeah, the way that they got around the Deadpool core by Peter just showing up. It's like Peter's uh, goddamn legend. And they're all just like, yeah. And then I, I just love Logan in the back of the show, like, yeah, way to way to go. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, there was a couple of great bits in that scene. Like, I also love the scene of it's like, of course, the the one guy does not regenerate, but everybody else does. <laughs> Also, the Kia Car Carnival versus Honda Odyssey conversation here in the car dealership. Very plot important for future Surprising. comedic bits. Yeah. Well, plot important is a stretch. Look, uh, as someone who is expanding the size of their family, the thought of Wade Wilson giving me advice on which mini, or sorry, MPV I should own rather than minivan, minivan. very relevant right now. So I appreciate that. I guess what? Technically, it's not. It's still a minivan. Um, <laughs> yeah, getting all of that stuff was fun here. I liked all this stuff. And eventually leading into the TVA. Uh, the TVA, I, lo I still just, I love the the vibe of the TVA. The retro. I, I, the I think, what, yeah, retro. like, th this is why we're so excited for Fantastic Four. Because the idea of this sort of, like, out of time presentation is really fun to look at. And it's really, you know, appealing just visually. Like the the orange and brown tones here versus the blue and white we're going to get in Fantastic Four. So I'm all about having a more, you know, 
play more with color. And we saw that here with the red and the yellow, like they can play with these colors, these color palettes and not be scared of costuming, to be honest. And they, they've been doing a good job in the MCU, like post, I guess, I will, phase I will one also shout really out, experimenting. I like how they added the green into the TVA now. Yeah. Um, like there For is... all time, always, and Loki. Yeah. I like, there's a poster in the TVA that very much looks like Loki holding all of the, uh, the, time the fabric of the universe together, which was very fun. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about Paradox as a villain? That was a fun moment because I've not seen Succession, and my sister turns me like, oh my god, it's the dude from Succession. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I've not seen it. But either way, I thought um, I need to find the name. Because uh, Matthew McFadden, or uh, McFadden, or mm-hmm. Fad, Fadden, uh, I'm not sure, um, did a great job as Paradox. I thought it was really a really interesting take on the TVA of like, he's been tasked with babysitting this timeline, and he doesn't want to do it, so he's going to end the universe. And to him, that's just, uh, it's funny looking at this from like a workplace perspective of, oh, he's just trying to find efficiencies in his day-to-day. This is his role. This is his, his, his job. So he's trying to, you know, improve his own quality of life at work, work-life balance, all that stuff. I can appreciate that. Deadpool, not so much. He doesn't appreciate the going from a few thousand years to 72 hours in terms of how long his friends and family have left to live. Yeah, no. it's it's so interesting watching it because I didn't I didn't love him like I thought McFadden uh, did great in the role, but he is ultimately like Paradox is just kind of this conniving little bitch of a character, uh, which is always fun. Like he's not the big bad of this movie, he he's not the big bad, but he thinks he is, which is always a fun character to have. Um, like he's fully aware of his actions. He's fully aware that what he is doing is considered wrong. But he doesn't want to do this shit, so he's going to find the easy way out to do this thing. Like, it is a level of, I can appreciate this from a workplace standpoint, but also, like, you're just kind of a bitch. And that's what your character's here to be. Um, your character is nothing compared to Cassandra Nova. No, he he, he is the pencil pusher, and Cassandra Nova is the one actually doing shit. Mm-hmm. And you see that when we, uh, when um, they come face to face, and it's just instant fold. Yeah, he had no, you know, box to stand on when it came to any of this. It reminded me of that bit from one of the Spider-Man games where it's like you go to fight Mysterio and then you beat him in w- with one punch. I mean, it's basically One Punch Man, the MCU film. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you beat Mysterio with one punch because he's just a dude. He's just um, a dude, yeah. Well, I, I, I think what's really great here is, you know, setting up Cassandra as the big bad of the film. There, There really is no way... And honestly, this, again, looking back at Logan and how Charles Xavier was handled there as he is, you know, essentially a WMD, his brain, at least with the way that he was having his seizures and killing people. You look at Cassandra Nova and 100 B 15 at the end, you know, saying you let an Omega level threat out and like loose into this universe and Deadpool's response was you're welcome. That is not a you're welcome moment. Like this is honestly doing a really good job of setting the setting the the tone for which mutants are going to be handled in the MCU. Mm -hmm. And I cannot wait to see other Omega level threats like Jean Grey get that same sort of of, uh, xenophobic treatment in the MCU. There was a level of comfort I got from this movie of them just like little lines like that of like Omega mutants and like we're mutants, we're never safe of X-Men. Like just that reminder of like, oh, that's right. This is established mutant um, everywhere in a way that we just don't have in the MCU. It was, like, weirdly comforting to have all of that in there, even though it's, like, you know, nine times out of ten, if someone's bringing up mutants, it's in a xenophobic nature. I'm like, even then, it's still, like, weirdly comforting to have all just all the mutant information out there. Yeah. Maybe that's kind and of I, I do a lot think... of X-Men right now, but... I just finished that Deadpool that you recommended me, and that was a great read. Um, but... Uh... I do love that we're setting this tone now for mutants so that when we do get to an inevitable reboot post secret wars and we have a mutant saga or whatever it's going to be that that level of xenophobia is front and center and isn't as like, I feel like the Fox universe did as best they could skirting around some of those themes, 
I see Feige and company be like, no, this is really fucked up and we're going to show how fucked up it is. And I cannot wait for that. Yeah, I think it's that difference between those early 2000s movies and now. Yeah. Um, we've learned, oh, you do actually have to tackle the topics that these shows and these characters are about. Let's not hint and let's just say that we're always going to be hated because we're mutants and let that tie into global events and the idea of Krakoa and a mutant nation and, and all of these things. Like, I cannot wait for those stories. This is just a first taste at what mutants being told in the mutant stories in the MCU will look like. And I'm ready to go. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Uh, it's Well, we're following loosely the plot. Let's talk about the uh, the void. Uh, and the Can you vamp a bit the on the void? void? I realize that I'm like an hour late to feeding the dog dinner. Oh, yeah, feed the dog. I'm going to talk eat. about the first Deadpool and Wolverine fight. Um, the first of many. Deadpool and Wolverine fight a ton in this movie. Uh, which is kind of, you know, pretty bog standard Deadpool and Wolverine, actually. Um, now, the way they use the void, I thought was really interesting. Uh, like... The Void, as we saw it uh, in Loki, was essentially a place of rejected ideas, kind of, sort of, of like, hey, let's throw these ideas that are fun Marvel gags that may ha we had the idea to use, or ideas that just never would be used, stuff like Frog Thor, which was an idea that they wanted to use but never did, or the Thanos Copter, which was never used, and in this one, it's a little bit more of a wasteland to the fox universe uh and i like that the void can be used for all these different things and all of that jazz i think it was for the most part handled well there's a couple things in there where i'm like okay um the 20th century fox logo being there it was absolutely funny um i know that was like one of the first things we saw uh, from like any promotional material for this movie at all ever but actually seeing it in there was still fun especially since that's no longer that company's name now there's searchlight pictures um i'm still vamping mitch is back I'm just gonna start saying terrible terrible things about mitch and hope he doesn't hear me of course he hasn't put on his headphones yet god he's taking forever god he's slow Look, we've recorded at a weird time, so I had other shit I gotta do. I was just saying how I like I like how they use the void in this of like the void in Loki was very much like this place of like unused ideas. So, you know, and like, here it became like, where the Fox universe went to die. Pretty much. Well, not even die. It went to just go be somewhere else. Where but, we were. I mean, that Fox time. logo was pretty dead, and it got a great laugh out of both theaters I was in. Same. And I, lo I love that that's there, too, and I, I mentioned this while you are gone, because it's also there no longer 20th Century Fox. They are now Searchlight Pictures. Um, or 20th Century Studios. Yeah, yeah. Fox Searchlight is Searchlight Pictures, then 20th Century Fox is 20th yeah. Century Studios. Like I had to explain all of this in the car ride home to my mom and sister. I loved all of that. <laughs> I believe you told me that was Salesforce Tower, right? No, what, what was that tower? That tower was something important. To it you. was. And the fact that you don't know that the tallest free, or I guess no. I don't know shit about Toronto. The name of the second tallest freestanding structure in the world. I don't give a shit about Toronto. You know that. It's the CN Tower, CN you tower. bigot. <laughs> Learn wow. your Canadiana, wow. motherfucker. <laughs> wow. We're, we're, we're getting mean tonight. Okay, okay. I see how it is. Fuck yeah. No, um, I'm just, I'm I knew, just, I'm just I knew, hey. Be, be appreciative that I at least knew it was something Toronto based. You did you did know it was something Toronto, and you just said Toronto correctly. So I, I also know it. full know full well the Salesforce Tower is in San Francisco, but um, but yeah, I like this first fight. This first fight is fun. Um, I think the best fight is the Honda Odyssey fight, but the like again, I love that they reuse tropes from the other Deadpool films here. The Honda Odyssey fight to you're the one that I want from Greece, honestly, perfection. And the blink and you'll miss it moment of the greatest showman on the radio, just chef's kiss. But the the whole like the 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 birth of these Deadpool films was somebody leaking the test footage of the car fight from Deadpool 1 online and that's what got them to greenlight the film. Deadpool 2, we got the car fight with Cable and, and Deadpool with the dubstep and the wub wubs. 
And here you get the best of the three, I would argue, between Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, I... Yeah, I would probably agree with that. Um, yeah, I like these two just bickering and fighting, quite literally, like the entire way through this movie. Um, and then they're, they're an like, old, angry couple, and it comes through beautifully. And I, I like their actual like tongue in cheek, you know, rivalry from real life bleeding over into this was just it, it's so much fun. Yeah, and he pokes they... fun at Jackman's divorce. Like what the fuck? Yeah, he really, he really did do that, didn't he? <laughs> um, yeah, of course. Uh, there's all that stuff, and then we get Johnny, which was this great, awesome moment. Uh, Chris Evans as, as Johnny Storm really was a great casting. Um, and that post credit scene was honestly uh, the fact see. that he wasn't full of shit that he was actually calling him out for everything he said verbatim. Mm-hmm. Let, let, let's also, talk about that post credit scene for just a second here, because I know some people were written away that, that was the post credit scene. I love, I love that this is kind of becoming a trend with them right now. If the post credit scene doesn't actually matter to the future of the MCU, it's just a and joke. it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. No, honestly, especially for a film like this, it ending the way it did was the right way for this story to end. Most it was an isolated story. I would tell you that most Marvel movies would probably have a mid credit scene and a post credit scene that would do like the mid credits is something setting up something next. And then the post credits is a bit, um, this, the, instead of doing the mid credit scene, they did their ode to the Fox universe, which I think is where I want to wrap this episode. Um, because God, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll end on that. Especially the use of good riddance time of your life is <laughs> really felt like a high school, uh, graduation, didn't it? <laughs> In the best way. Um, I think what's also, great about that post credit scene is there are ties to other Marvel properties in there. Like there is an MCU cameo in there that if you aren't, if you don't know, and you should know at this point, especially if you're listening to us, that I'm going to see the goddamn Kevin camera from She-Hulk be the camera in that dome thing. Like, yeah. of course, like it's great. Um, you love it. But yeah, this getting into him that also seeing all of these villains from the various X-Men movies, um, and it is them. It is those actors and those characters. For know. the most part, there are a few that got recast. Mm-hmm. But you know, seeing like Ving Ving Rhames did not come back to do uh, Juggernaut. You had a different actor playing that yeah. variant of Psylocke, and that's what's so great about this. But is... we had like Toe, Deathstrike, Callisto, Azazel, Bullseye, Psylocke, like. I don't know if we could like, and a few of those were the same actor and a few of them weren't. And I don't know if they've confirmed all of them one way or another, but I, I, I just love the idea of these characters coming back in one form or another as variants. And again, just paying that homage to the legacy in the Fox films. Yeah. That was really good. I think, I think Aaron Reed did a good job at resembling Vinnie Jones. Um, but yeah, I think it was, it was seeing, seeing Tyler May uh, as Sabretooth was, was what did it for me for all of two and a half minutes <laughs> not even um that was hilarious to me of like okay we've been waiting for this fight for years and then they just did the the uh samurai fight thing um a lot of furiosa jokes too which was funny um a lot of just tongue-in-cheek jokes at other properties like that moment in the tva when deadpool goes to just give me a second he goes to the camera you know, that was so sucking fox. I'm going to Disneyland. Smash the camera. Move like, on. so good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, getting to meet Cassandra and all of this. This whole like destroyed uh, giant man body being their headquarters. I loved loved it. I mean, um, Paul Rudd finally aged. Yeah. Uh, that joke got a lot of laughs out of my out of my theater at the show. Yeah. And like I've jo- like I let my Marvel Unlimited subscription lapse, but the last thing that I was reading before I did was the run of new X-Men where Cassandra Nova was introduced, and it's just, it was cool to have that, like, I don't normally go into films having a lot of that comic accuracy, a comic background for, like, the introduction or origin of these characters, so that was nice. I'll tell you what, man, keep reading Cassandra Nova, because she is absolutely insane in the comics. I would, but I let my subscription lapse because it's expensive, and uh, we're having a baby. So very fair, very fair. Um, yeah, I I really want to quickly 
just continue to shout out Emma Corrin. They did such a great job in this role. Like, they were the standout to me in this movie. Um, which is really hard to do in a movie where Ryan Reynolds does not shut up for 75% of that movie. Um, but they keep making jokes about him not shutting up, which I thought was great because we haven't really gotten a lot. We've gotten some of that. But to get that regularly through this from both Nova and and Logan was fun. Yeah. I think all that stuff, I like how they got out with like the uh, the destroyed foot of a sentinel. Um, presuming that, that was one of the... Uh, weirdo weird sentinels that we got like that looked like they were not sentinels at all when we got them in the x-men movies no um, it looked like the one from days of future past yeah they did not where... look like sentinels like in the movie i still stand that those sentinels did not look like sentinels but they were sentinels and they were sentinel enough i do think that we'll get the 90s accurate sentinels in uh sentinels in the way in the mcu at some point but... to kill mutants but that's about it yeah. um getting all the last that there was fun um Nice pool was a moment. Didn't love nice pool to be honest. It was um, it was fun exposition and also the, like the joke of like, where's your mask? I mean, look at me. Yeah, I just I feel like they kind of just overused it at that point. I feel like ni- nice pool's it, existence was to die. Um, oh, for sure. But I also think there was a lot of exposition that we got out of that character as well as the the Honda Odyssey, which is a very critical moment in in Deadpool's journey. Cool. Like, Nice Pool has a lot of these jokes. and like The, the proposal. The proposal was funny. But, like, the rest of it, I think every other joke. Was odd, that, that got laugh. the loudest laugh in both of my theaters both times. Yeah, like, every other joke he had, though, felt totally flat to me. Um, Like, the I self-identify as a feminist joke he had was bad. Um, it, but it was bad in a way where, like, you... you cr- it was cringe. No, right? it wasn't like, cringe you, for me. It was just bad. It was... I thought it was cringe. Oh, I thought it was just a terrible joke. Um, and I, I think that's where it's come down to our, our opinions of those movies. I just, I think a lot of the humor in this movie is just bad. Um, and like, I can understand it being just cringe for other people. Um, we get that, we get that, uh, da, 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 they fight, we run into Laura and everybody in like what appears to be a, like abandoned Scarlet Witch Temple. That also had the Hulk's bed from Sakaar. And also a very blatant uh, product endorsement for Jack Daniels. Um, but also, Hugh Jackman was awarded the Guinness World Record for the longest career as a live-action Marvel character for, for reprising his role in this film. But there was another actor that broke that record in this same film. Because somehow... Despite all of their differences in the creation of Blade Trinity, Ryan Reynolds was able to convince Wesley Snipes to reprise his role as Blade, to which I screamed little girl screams in my theater seeing Wesley Snipes walk out as motherfucking Blade. Yeah, I was that was an oh shit moment when he showed up for me for showed up for sure. Immediately followed by and what we I, talked about earlier, which was like, well, hey, I saw that, and then I saw the card flick. I saw the card flick come into frame. I'm like, oh my god, they got Taylor Kitsch back. Nah, B. Nah, they got Channing Tatum to be Gambit. And I didn't understand a word this man said. And that was the point. Who <laughs> was, was your dialect joke. coach? The Minions? <laughs> we got Minions joking this, like, of all things. like Yeah, we did. Like, Deadpool don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, all that stuff with them was fun. Um, it is w- the Laura and Logan scenes, especially, were probably the biggest parts of this. I think yeah. While the the uh, the cameos are fun, it's fun to finally see Chan Tatum as it, and the the constant jokes of. All I the feel people, like I was all born the into we, the void. All the people we saved, all the, or all the people we wanted to save, um, like I, I feel like I was born in the void, or the universes we want to get back to. I I don't feel like I was part of any universe. Um, all of that I didn't love. I didn't love the suit. I will say that I don't know if it was just. Channing Tatum is too like he's too Channing built Tatum is of a too guy. Bulk, is too bulked up to be. To, in that but like the headpiece looked weird. Everything else looked fine. Just the, the headpiece, the neck looked. It, it needed to be thinner. If it that just, makes sense, it like, literally it just, cannot be with Channing Tatum's neck. Um, well, yeah, but it, it instead of being like whatever that hard plastic thing was, just have it be like like a, a balaclava or I don't know, like. I see like a ski mask sort of thing. Like that would have been fine. Fair enough. 
I um yeah, all that's in there, like Laura was the point of this of this. Uh, yeah. I will say that I mean like, she's the only one that we saw get saved by the TVA. Mm -hmm. I will say all the other ones may though, have been, but Laura was the only one for sure that was confirmed, right? Well, I mean I'm kind of assuming the other three died. Because that was their goal. But they would have died at the same time as Laura. So why would the TVA go back and just say well, we Laura saw and not earlier, the other three? Well, we saw earlier that um Alive doesn't kill everyone, they're just selectively, so maybe True survived and they didn't. Um, yeah. But no, I will say seeing, you know, Wesley Snipes, seeing Jennifer Garner, seeing the, the, really just those two for what I'm trying to say is they looked great in their roles. Um, they, they felt right in their roles. Um, especially seeing an Electra costume that what not like ridiculously over sexualized like they were in the originals was really nice to see. Um, I mean, Blade calling back to one of the most ridiculous lines in all of cinema about ice skating uphill. Yeah. Be like they're still ice. They're still trying to ice skate uphill. It's like, mm -hmm. no, but also thank you. Please shut up now. <laughs> um, no, but like, even just getting to Channing Tatum and Gambit, like this version of Gambit was really cool in terms of like. The, I I do like the fact that you couldn't understand a word he was saying, and they even have a joke in there of like, we're getting all this exposition, you can't understand a word he's fucking saying. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really fun. And Deadpool basically having to translate for him in the car. But when we get to that fight scene, seeing the bow staff lit up with kinetic energy, the cards, boom, like everything about Gambit in that scene was just like, I'm all about this. I need a live action Gambit. Yeah, them more so than to, what we saw with Taylor Kitsch. Them rolling up to bring him out was was definitely a fun moment. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was the this is getting back to the point where I'm like kind of starting to care again. Um, it is entirely because of Laura. Uh, I think her moment with with Logan is so good, and Logan Logan being my saying her saying like yeah I know what happened and him being like no I need to say it. Um, I think was a super powerful moment. Um, Especially since he wouldn't tell Wade. Yeah, I thought it 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 added volume or weight to their relationship, which I thought was really really well done. Um. Yeah, pretty much anything, any moment that Laura was in, I was 100% here for. Also, just getting to see her grown up since Logan was so nice. She's definitely matured as an actor since that film, and it, mm -hmm. it showed here, and I was really happy to see it. And like the exact same as the movie. Yeah. Um, but I, I can see a full, you know, Wolverine, yellow spandex, X-23 costume in post-Secret Wars or in Secret Wars. And that'll be really cool to see. Yeah, um, we get all that jazz. They go back. They fight. We get one of the most like one of my favorite shots in this entire moment when they're driving up of Cassandra Nova just standing in the eye of the skull. Um, it was literally skull fucking Paul Rudd. Yeah, no, it wasn't. But because she's not doing anything, she's just standing there. Um, I mean, she did mention flicking her bean at least once. <laughs> she's she's psychotic. so presumably that has Cassandra happened Nova's in that psychotic. skull at some like, point. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I'm just being. I, I know, I'm just. Also, of course, it has. It's a home. Also, look at the amount of people that are there. Exactly. Um, anyways, yeah, we get the fight there. It's all fun. Uh, everything in Logan's mind is dope. Uh, eventually, they go back. I think that's honestly. I think that's most of what the movie is. Because after that, they fight all the Deadpool's. We get their moment of. Uh, the two of them Marvel becoming sparkly the, portal. Yeah, we get we get the moment of them the becoming, Marvel sparkles. Presumably, both of them becoming the anchor beings, or maybe I, just one of them. I don't know. It it probably um, won't matter all that much. Say, to I don't be honest, because I feel like that universe is just gonna get snapped. Uh, it was a great, great joke that uh, B fifteen is just incredibly into Peter. Um, I mean, who wasn't? fair um i also loved the uh the turn of paradox of like trying to play it to his benefit oh Where they didn't lived, make bitch. it they were my friends and we didn't we lived fuck um yeah that's that's pretty much the rest of this movie it's the fight wrapping up uh the ending is cute um them all together again going over to their mask i i got one gripe with this though before we get there the cowl. 
the cowl. Yeah. I waited 20 years for this man to don this yellow cowl. And I didn't love it. I thought it looked fine. I thought it looked like Wolverine's cowl would look live action. Uh, the, the, maybe, but the problem I have with it is they did the Deadpool animation to it, which is fine when the entire face is covered, but when it's only half a face, the eyes and the change in expression on it just oh, looked weird. I was I was, did not notice that they were doing that. They definitely did the the CGI forehead thing. I didn't love that. Um, there were shots where it looked great, especially after it was Hugh Jackman so had his shirt blown off. Shirtless with just the cowl. Which honestly, that to Madonna, like it was, it, it was a discovery moment for many people that will see this movie over the years, and the fact that he was able to do that at his age is just. It makes me feel like less of a person. It is Hugh Jackman. Uh, I also I, I glanced by. I want one of the funniest uh, jokes to me in this entire movie, and it's very much a Griffin joke. And I'm so happy I was not the only person to laugh at this in our theater. But uh, it was when they first ran into Cassandra Nova. And he's like, I didn't want to do this to you, but he I will make him sing the entire second act of Music Man by himself without rehearsing. Mm -hmm. That was very much a Griffin joke that I appreciated. Oh, we also just flew past a line that I thought was really fun when when uh, they destroy a Kia Carnival, unfortunately. And uh, the kid's are like, that's Deadpool and that's Wolverine. Like, you're damn straight it is. Disney brought him back. They're going to make him do this till he's 90. And they probably will. Which, I mean, with the news we got this weekend at Comic-Con with Robert Downey Jr., they probably will. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. they fight the people to save the day. Uh, he gets the girl back. Um, they're all cute. <laughs> Bad about da -da -da -da. really weird that Domino's not in this movie, like at all. By the way, it, it is, but it isn't because there's a joke when he's talking with Happy Hogan. Uh, they all died, but between you and me, they didn't test well, especially Cable. Of like, they just found a way to write them all out with one line, be like, "Oh yeah, we wrote out X Force," mm -hmm. but like other X Force members are there. I mean, just Peter and Shatterstar, right? Peter, Shatterstar. And presumably Vanisher? Vanisher's just always there. Vanisher's like that one guy from Earth. The Boys. Um, yeah, this movie's this movie exists. This movie's, I think this movie would probably rank for me, like, good. I would not say this movie's great to me. I know I'm much more down on it than you and most of the people who've talked about it. But I still think it's worth, worth seeing. I love that this I, movie's I think doing for... so well. Yeah, I, I think for me, if I'm looking at it through the lens of having nostalgia for the Fox films, which I did. I mean, growing up as a 90s child, they were some of the first superhero products I was exposed to. Apart from like X-Men and Spider-Man, the animated series as a kid, getting the Tobey Maguire and the black leather X-Men movies was like my intro to Marvel and Marvel comics and Marvel films. And then going back and watching Blade and daredevil oh, the fantastic four movies which honestly i like them more than most until we got to fan four stick and that reverence i think for me puts it a little higher um but it, as a film looking at it objectively as a film i do agree with a lot of the points that you made and it is pro it is a i think it is a good movie and it is a great fox sunset like a, an ode to the fox marvel yeah universe. i think as an ode to like as a thank you to those movies because like whether or not we they were um whether or not you enjoyed them or whether or not you recognize that they're shit now like they're still these very important movies to marvel as a whole and like for a lot of us older people you especially because you're god you're old um <laughs> it's def they're definitely important to childhood um but I think that a lot of the, like, from that standpoint, I, like, I get it. I like that. The whole uh, showing all of this behind the scenes footage during the uh, credits while Good Riddance plays. That montage was help, real. Like, like, it, like, that montage off. for me was to the level of the character montages in Endgame. Also, holy shit, Hugh Jackman looks so young in those that archival footage. That's because he was. Griffin, the like, first movie came out 24, 24 years, years ago. ago. I know. Um... Which means that was likely longer ago. Um, 
like seeing all of that like it was and nice but fun also fact, shot in toronto nice which is probably why the toronto building's there um no they they so they shot at this old castle that well, um, they probably wanted to pay how, homage to toronto in this film well i feel like they just wanted to pay homage to toronto because brian reynolds is canadian and well, both yeah, characters are canadian that you can do that for in canada but neither okay let me know in the comments of any canadian structure more iconically canadian than the cn tower i, I know don't Griffin think didn't you know have it. one <laughs> we do it's called the cn tower and that's what that was um but yeah i think there was there was one where it's like none of the this. characters are from toronto they just did it because that's like the canadian thing to do this hey. movie for me like despite that stuff like from the actual just movie itself the wolverine beat, beat, beats i all really enjoyed but the deadpool stuff i just didn't um like most of his humor to me was just pedantic backpedaling frankly when it comes to like that's a just level of a humor. character though well a level of humor that is deadpool in these first two movies there is a level of at the risk of sounding dumb intellectualism in those jokes of why they're funny this it was just felt like let's just take shots at lowest common denominator um and like one of my rules of comedy is always uh always always um target up never target down um it would just it felt very pandering in some of its humor to me uh and pandering to a crowd that i very much disagree with but to each their own humor is a very weird thing um I'm glad this movie exists. I'm glad this movie's doing well. This is the first time in a while where I couldn't just go to the movie theater and get a ticket for the movie. For the Marvel movie. See, uh, so. so, yeah, the first, like, when I bought my tickets for the Thursday night showing, it was almost sold out. Like, we were lucky to get tickets for four because we saw it at a smaller theater, like 100 seats or whatever, because it was one of, like, the 19 or the, like, the adults only theaters where I prefer to see films because children are annoying in the theater and i don't plan on taking my child to the theater for a very long time i got good news about this uh, one <laughs> it's r-rated yeah r-rated it wasn't going to be kids anyway because the second showing i actually saw it at the small theater that i've talked about in previous episodes i think it was inside out was the last one where um there's a small theater run by a man in uh, northern ontario this is the one that, that the documentary documentary you sent me right yes if anyone's interested in learning more about this theater that i love the movie man as a documentary that recently released covering this man's journey to create this theater in rural Ontario. It's also a feral cat rescue, and it documents a lot of how they didn't feel like their business was going to make it through the COVID-19 pandemic because you have small town business in an industry that was very much impacted by the, by the shutdowns. So I plan on watching it sometime soon, and I recommend it to anyone else if you want to see more of this really interesting museum slash theater. But even with that, we got to that theater. like it, They don't do assigned seating. It's cash only. So we got to that theater earlier than I've gotten to a movie in a very long time. We got there like 40 minutes, 45 minutes early, got our tickets, and had to stand in a line outside of the theater until they were ready to let us in. And even then, the theater was like 95% sold out in small town, rural Ontario, which just goes to show what demand was like for this movie. And it's going to continue to do numbers. Reminds me of when I was getting tickets. I think it was Avengers Endgame was the last time I had to do that. Um... It's like it's a it's a different different vibe to movie theaters. I yeah. I hope that this is a resurgence to theaters, not just to Marvel. Um, but that's... I think we'll find out in a couple of weeks when Borderlands drops. Oh dear God, the movie's not going to be good, man. No, it's not. It really isn't. I'm going to see that on like a cheap Tuesday night. I'm still going to go uh, see it, it's, but it's going to be a movie. I'm going to hate myself while I watch that movie. Honestly, I don't see a lot more coming out this year that has a chance to compete with this. Oh, God, no. I, I, no, uh, there's one movie I think, at least in the R rated category, that will. And that is a movie that you and I both don't want to see succeed. And that's the, uh, Joker Folia, duh. Yeah. I, looking forward, there's still some movies that like, I'm very excited for in theaters. Uh, you know, selfishly, like I'm, I'm getting a goddamn new Beetlejuice movie this year. 
Um, you are. And I really do want, I do still want to see Twisters in 4DX. I was, say, I was joking that, like, my favorite movies of the year so far are a Ghostbusters movie, t- Twister, and hopefully a Beetlejuice movie is going to follow that up. Like, what? Yeah, I mean, just um, looking at the rest of the summer, I don't think Transformers does numbers. No, I could see maybe, like, I think, um, I don't think any movie doing these kinds of numbers, but there is one movie that's coming out. Two theaters Venom that I won't. want to shout out. Um, and I have not shut up about... The only other movies that I can see doing these kind of numbers this year are Gladiator 2 and Moana 2. Fair. Uh, I want to quickly... Otherwise, I don't though. see there being much. Like, I, I, I want Sonic the Hedgehog 3 to do well. It's not going to do these kind of numbers. I don't think Mufasa is going to do this well. Can I say a thing, Mitch? I'm trying to say a thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is the I want to quickly shout out a movie that I wish to, will do this number, but I don't think it will. And I want to shout out the Wild Robot. Um, that looks fantastic. I saw that trailer before Inside Out too, and I cannot wait for that movie. This is going to be, and the reason I'm bringing it up here is this: that is a movie to go see at theaters. Uh, we will not have a review of it. It is not within the purview of Disney stuff. DreamWorks, um, yeah, I believe it is DreamWorks. Or uh, yeah, uh, but it's really interesting. It's almost entirely 2D painted. The only 3D element in it is the main, like, robot character. Like, it seems like it's going to be this beautiful animation. Uh, and I really want to make sure, like, people know this movie exists. This movie's going to be amazing. Go see this movie. I don't care if it's not related to anything we talk about ever, but it's going to be cool. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention it. Oh, it's debuting at TIFF. Yeah. Maybe I should um, try to grab a ticket. I've never actually been to a showing at TIFF. Because it's always too challenging to find the right time that works or to, uh, you know, the, the films that I tend to want to see are going to be more commercial and sell out very quickly. I will say also, like, this is absolutely not the, the episode to talk about it, but this is my, this is based off of a children's book series. So it has a very much an environmentalism slant. Uh, I've been talking like privately, like th- I'm convinced that this is going to be the next How to Train Your Dragon uh, franchise. Um like, I really do think this is going to be big. All that said and done, uh, Deadpool. Recommend you go see it in theaters, obviously. Uh, go find a showtime if you can, because good luck. And if you can't, if you can't find a showtime, let's just go grab shawarma or something. You keep bringing it up. I really want shawarma for dinner now. I'm so hungry. We've been here for the last 90 minutes, and all I want to do is go get food. Okay, let's wrap this thing up then. Mitch, where can people find us? At D plus us, at Mr. Mitch George, at Griffey D-Pad, Twitter, YouTube, all the spots. You know where to find us if you're here. Thank you. Yeah, we should probably start doing this at the top. Uh, we got the rig and roll. Yeah. Um, we'll, 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 we'll workshop something. Yeah, we'll add it in there. Uh, yeah, go check out our other stuff. Go check out our episode that is available now all about Marvel's Hall H announcements. You can go check out other stuff. In the future, when we release them, a big old project that we've been working on, hopefully coming out soon. We will talk to y'all next time, but until then, have a magical day. Excelsior!